everybody my name is John Stamper I'm the founder of JRS4 Media and today I want to share with you three ideas on how to up your content strategy game in 2023 all right so here's the deal uh I love this content creation game I have been it in, been in it in some sort of facet since like 2017 um I've spent about 19 years in dentistry and in 2017 uh, made the decision to start a couple of podcasts uh all in an effort to meet more people in my industry and what i learned over that recording those podcasts was just how fun it was to create content uh i got to meet so many you know individuals and i think more importantly like have them share their stories so this whole content creation game is really you know, got me excited going, you know, back to 2017. I can't believe we're, we're, we're going on like five years here. Um, but I wanted to take just a couple of minutes today because I feel like a lot of companies and organizations and entrepreneurs and all of that uh, are starting to see how valuable it is to create your own content. And I thought that if there's any insights that I could provide from you from what I've experienced over the last five years, I wanted to do that. Uh, as many of you know, I don't know what percentage of people on a daily basis are flipping through all the different social media channels. And, you know, we're just inundated with content. It's all over the place now. And I really believe that we're living in this content creation economy, content creator economy, really, where like we have the opportunity now, if you're a, you know, a smaller, you know, small to midsize entrepreneur that's growing your business, we've all seen it. Um, in many cases, those individuals, you know, have made names for themselves, have built their businesses and started not even close to the size of some of the larger companies that have, you know, millions of dollars of a marketing budget. So this content game as we move forward has, is, is evolving so fast. And, 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 and I thought it would be beneficial to share a couple of ideas with you, you know, as we move to 2023 in an effort to help you create, you know, your content creation strategy. So before we do that as well on these three ideas, here's where I'm going to start first. I'm not going to get into the platforms, the production. Many of us, when we go on social media, we are inundated with organizations and companies and, you know, content creators themselves that are letting us know, like, this is how many times you should post on social media and, you know, this and that, and this is how you can gain followers and so on and so forth. I think all of those things, if you're going to do this right, are important. But I think before you even get to that element, what's most important, and that's what we're going to go over today, is going back to basics and truly understanding what it is you want to get your message out like what is what are you passionate about like what is your whole strategy uh in regards of in, in regards to creating content because i truly believe that in before you get into all of that other stuff you have to be confident and know and get everything planned out because here's what i will tell you it is hard it takes a lot of commitment uh, the, you know, some of the companies that I'm working with now and creating content, I've got one organization that I work with where we're producing three shows and the amount of time that it takes to theme out all the topics, make sure you can schedule everything with, with the guests and get all the production done and all of that. Like that in itself is very, very, um, uh, difficult and takes a lot of commitment. The reality is, is that it makes it easier if you take the time before you get in, involved in all of that to go over and to establish the three things I'm going to talk to you about today. So with that, let's go ahead and get into idea number one. So the first question that I have for you is before we, we worry about anything, before we worry about what social media channel to be on, like how am I going to do the production, my audio, my mic, all of that stuff, we're going way back to the core of, of content creation. And that is, is taking the time to think about what are you even going to talk about? Now, I think what's interesting in the world that we live in now, in the sense that anybody can, you know, get on social media and have a conversation based on how many followers you have or what have you, is that what I like about this question and or this idea is that when you have to start with thinking about what you want to talk about, it requires you to do two things. First of all, it's what do you want to talk about? What are you excited about? What are you passionate about? but it also forces you to think about what people are going to want to listen to and or your potential audience. Like what is it 
that they are looking for? What do they want to be educated on? And so it's a two-way street. And so one of the ideas that I had is that if you if you think about it, if if you had the opportunity for the next six weeks, three times a week to speak in front of a thousand people, what would you say? Right? You would say something that you're passionate about. Maybe you'd talk about your product or your service or your organization or what have you. But as you know, you would have to think about what you were going to talk about, but you also have to think about your audience, how they're going to react and all of that. So what's very exciting, I think, about this world that we live in now is that authenticity um, has come to the top. And what I mean by that is there used to be a time when we created content where it had to be super professional. Uh, we would think through everything we were going to talk about. Now you can just see just from the viral video effect or what have you, even just you know, following people that we all are entertained by on social media is that creating something personally about yourself, showing a little bit of vulnerability. There's just something about checking in and seeing somebody that you follow, seeing somebody that you respect and learning a little bit about, you know, who they are personally, or maybe they create a fun video or something like that. And so idea number one, when you're sitting down and thinking about what you're going to talk about is to mix it up between a little bit of, you know, your personality and something fun uh, with your business idea. So let's say, for example, your idea is to, you know, you're, you started a car detailing business and your whole goal is to get your message out to everybody out in your community or everybody that follows you on social media in regards to, you know, getting their car clean. So you want to mix in a little bit about what you do, what makes you different you know, connected with a little bit about yourself and, and kind of mix those two things together. I think what that does is it helps your audience stay a little bit more connected to you. They feel like they know you a little bit. Uh, it also removes that wall of you as a company feeling like you're always selling to them, going over your features and benefits and things like that. So I don't know about all of you, but I have always found myself that when I find somebody very interesting that I watch, whether it be on social media or on television or anywhere I've gone, if their story engages me, the odds are that I'm going to want to learn a little bit more about what they do. Do they own a business? Do they coach? You know, do, do they lead an organization? And so I think that the work piece of what a company offers tends to follow the personal connection that you can have with your audience. So again, that is idea number one is think about what you're going to create, what you even want to talk about. Uh, and then mix it up a little bit with your personality as well as with business. All right. So idea number two is the question I have for you is there are so many things that you could talk about, right? But most importantly, like what two goals do you want to accomplish with your content? So there, this this topic in general can go so far and wide because there are so many things to talk about when it comes to creating content. But like anything else that you do, whether it be a marketing campaign in the olden days with your company where you had a target, you had a budget you wanted to hit, or you had a certain amount of new customers that you wanted to attract, or you wanted to stay engaged with your current customers. The reality is, is that until you write down or establish what you want to accomplish, it's very possible that in this content game, you could be all over the place and you could be confusing people, right? So here's the idea, okay? First and foremost, do some homework, right? I think what's so fun about this content creation world is that we are all consumers. So for anybody that is going to get on camera and start to create content about what they're passionate about, their business or organization or what have you, you're also a consumer. So the idea I would have for you is that before you start to put together your strategy or think about how you're going to up your content creation game, look at your own buying habits. Like when you're on social media, uh, or you're out there looking for products and services, what, what are maybe the last two or three things that you purchased from something that you saw on social media? What was it about that purchase or about that ad or about that video that got you excited to move forward and have you purchase that, that product or service? The other thing I would say about this is understanding this is because there is an element of having to see it many different times, right? We all know that we don't typically buy, you know, the first time we see something unless it's really, really engaging or we really want it at that moment. And the company's timing was perfect when that uh, content reached us. Most of the time, it takes a while for us to see that. Uh, but that would be idea number two is flip it around and look at your own behavior in regards to how you buy 
you know, products and services? And what was it that that organization did? How was their content unique? How did it engage you to want to move forward in an effort to be able to purchase that service product or what have you? All right. So finally, right, you've thought about what it is that you want to talk about. You feel pretty good about it. You're going to mix up a little bit of personal so that you can engage people that can know a little bit about who you are. Take away some of that stuffy business element, but you are going to add some business aspects to it because people need to know, you know, what you want to, you know, help them with, how you want to help them solve a problem. Number two, we talked about, you know, establishing some goals so that you don't go down a rabbit hole. And more importantly, you have an idea of, you know, what you want to accomplish so that you can build a framework around it. And that leads me to idea number three. And this is my last question for you. So you determine what you want to talk about. And my question to you would be, would you be able to create with the content that you're excited about that you want to get out there? Would you be able to create a five episode learning series, a 12 episode learning series? Could you take with all of the content that you have, could you sit down and literally write out 52 weeks of content? Meaning, you know, whatever it is that you educate on or whatever it is that you talk about or you're passionate about, could you sit down and in week one, put together a topic and a theme and do that for 52 straight weeks so that you literally have built out a framework for your entire year before you start to produce the content, start talking about it. So here's my idea, right? Build that framework on the topics and the episodes that you want to discuss. If you want to start simple, think about it along the lines of a TV show, right? We all are engaged in this Netflix world where we watch episodes of a show. Like I just recently, you know, watched season two of the white Lotus. I love that show. And post that show, I was following a lot of the actors. And when I heard a lot of them say, when they were asked, you know, did they watch the episodes? They looked at it from a perspective that I'd never thought about. And they looked at it as a seven hour movie right? Which I thought was pretty interesting because when you really think about it, I mean, it starts at the beginning, goes to the end. It ideally could be a seven minute movie, but in the world that we live in where we can only consume things so much, our attention span has, has drastically, uh, you know, gone down with just this, you know, amount of content all over the place in this fast moving world, we have to break things up into episodes. And so that is how we as consumers are watching content from an entertainment perspective. I would challenge you to do the same thing with you as you're looking to create content for your business. Break it up into episodes. So for example, if you have a topic that you're that you're interested in, you know, could you start with a five episode learning series? And I think what's challenging about this is sometimes I think we feel like we have to get everything out right off the bat. And we don't understand the fact as we all have seen the numbers. Most of the time when people are scrolling through on our phones and we're looking at things, you've seen it. I mean, we, we all do it. You flip through there super fast, right? So people's attention span is only so large. So if you are going to create content, why not do it in a respectable bite size amount, 12 minute, 15 minute, 20 minute episode. Um, and that might allow you to take maybe a, 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 a concept that normally you would speak for to an hour and break it up into three 20 minute episodes. And right off the bat, you have an hour's worth of content, three separate episodes, and then you can stretch that out. It also allows you, once you have that framework to know and understand, you know, if you're going to have any guests on there, so on and so forth. So, uh, as we continue this learning series, I'm very excited to continue sharing content with all of you. I challenge you to, uh, as you're looking at upping your content strategy game, to think about those three things. You know, again, in review, the first one is, is that take the time to know what you want to talk about. Be committed about it. Be excited because once that camera goes on and you're live to people, you want to make sure that um, they know a little bit about you as well as what you want to talk about. Number two, get those goals laid out so that you feel like you're moving in the right direction. And then finally, build on a framework. Uh, identify those themes and those topics and get them on paper and get that planned out. And then the next time I come to all of you, I'm excited. We're actually going to kind of take this down the next path and start working on ideas, talking about ideas and how you can now actually start to produce that content um, and we'll get into a little bit about the different social media platforms and all that stuff. So for all of you that are watching, thanks so much. Really appreciate your time. Excited, you know, for you to get into this content game. If you're not already doing it, um, right below in all of the links where you're watching this, a Jairus for media.com. If you want any additional tools and resources or anything like that, learn a little bit about what we're doing to help people out there, um, manage their content. Um, you know, be, go ahead and check that out. And again, thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.